the front end. And for all of you that came to the tour last year, thank you. You have a chance to meet Andrea Roche, who is one of the kindest, most wonderful, gregarious, hospitable human beings I've ever met in my life. I'm so completely honored and thrilled to be able to sell her wines. Um, and I hope you know by now that, <laughs> I, I, yeah, okay. Uh, I talk about these people and I feel really fortunate that I get to actually know the growers and know their kids and all of these pieces. That's really important for us. Um, but German wine isn't just my job, like it is actually my lifestyle as well. I actually really love these wines and got into them before I got this job. And I was uh, ready to leave France 44, you know, a year and a half ago and I cold emailed my boss and said, hey, if you think you ever have room for me, I'm into what you do and I think you're into what I do. And she had room for me in six months, which was great. So yes, I sell these wines, but also I live the wines because they're, these people are just the most wonderful and I also love the wine. Um, so we're going to the Franken here, right? And the Franken region, if you're looking at your map, it is just east of, right? Yeah, just east of Frankfurt. It is on the Main River, so this beautiful windy river. It is incredibly picturesque. This is the old gate at Epochen. These are box voidals stacked. You have some box voidals in your inventory, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Um, the producer is Hans Versching, and so you'll see one of my favorite places on the planet. This is the Grand Cru Vineyard site of Julius Echterberg. Julius Echterberg. Um, we had a picnic here when I was there last year. It's really, really beautiful. There is Sylvaner and Riesling there and Chardreba. Um, what's important for you to know when you want to sell Hans Versching? Well, first of all, they have been making wine for 400 years. They're female-led 15th generation Andrea Versching, who's this lovely lady here. Um, I took this picture. That was at our picnic in Julius Echterberg. It wasn't quite as green. Um, and Sylvaner is their most important grape variety. And it's probably something you don't have elsewhere in the book. I don't think so. Um, and probably something that you've maybe never worked with. So essentially, when you're selling that to on-prem, off-prem, doesn't matter. Crisp, refreshing, dry, very spring-style white wine. Um, I say spring because the ultimate pairing for it is asparagus or spargle. And in the spring, the Germans lose their mind for spargle season. And there is uh, asparagus in everything, and there is Sylvaner everywhere. Um, this particular Sylvaner um, is kind of their... It's a relatively new product. They've only made it for three vintages, so this is the third here. This is kind of their entry level, Sylvaner. And I actually think for being entry, it's really, really tasty, incredibly refreshing. The Sylvaner grape itself lends itself to be kind of a lateral to Gruner Veltliner, right? So we've got a very similar acid and fruit structure. We've got a lot of like green tree fruit here, underripe pear, certainly some lime, but it's aromatic, very aromatic. When you swirl the glass, it's coming out. And then there's almost like a little hint of greenness on the finish, similar to Gruner Veltliner. And that's where Sylvaner can really work its magic when we talk about vegetable pairings, because if you've ever tried to pair broccoli, good luck, it's awful. So when you're thinking about any sort of vegetable pairing, um, asparagus always works really well with Thai food. You know, we've got that green herbaceousness. So when we're talking Thai food, hello, Sylvaner. This is also a liter bottle. It is btg -able, so we've got some by-the-glass pricing for it now. It stacks really well. There's a dinosaur on the label, which everyone will always ask about. Uh, Andrea calls it the Dino Wine. The dinosaur is on there, and I'll put this up to see if you guys can see. Um, the Dino is on there as a nod to the Jurassic clay soils that are in the region. They just went with that Dino Wine. I think the labeling is really classy, but in a world of critter wines, I want like a big Dino on the front, right? Maybe not so classy, and they try to keep it a little classier. Should we go to the next one? And here's these box foils. Okay. These are my notes. Okay, so Sylvaner, Hans Versching is certified fair and green. And what that means for you is it's a mostly European-centric certification model 
that yes takes into account vineyard practices but more than that also takes into account your total carbon footprint your uh, packaging weight right your labor practices your community involvement so it's a much bigger whole picture and you'll see it a lot in germany but austria france there are a lot of different countries that are on this certified fair and green model uh, we've got Jurassic clay, crisp, fresh herbs. We talked about spargle, fresh vegetables. It's very good with raw oysters and herb cheeses. If you, um, there's a cheese that comes out in the spring that's got like, flowers on it. This wine is perfect with that cheese. Um, and of course, Thai food. And then you do have in stock this Epoffer Shoy Reba. So we love Shoy Reba. Everybody knows the Theft Again Shoy Reba. This is a little lighter style. And then these box boidles, that is the traditional shape of the bottle for the Franken region. And there is a lot of legend and myth over where this name and where this bottle shape comes from. Um, the one that I subscribe to is that it is the same shape of the flask the monks had tied around their belts. And I don't know if they were drinking 750s or not, whatever. Um, but that is where this bottle shape comes from. Plus, um, there is some lore about uh, it being stacked in farms, where like this bottle shape stacked better for them. That's fine. Okay, questions. Hans Bershing, Sylvan, 